Hey guys, in the previous lecture, we learned how to calculate time as a function of input. But in this lecture, we will map our running time into some sets. Okay, let's first uh, discuss the intuition behind sets. Let's say we have two functions where the first function is t1n, which is equal to 6n square plus 3n plus 4. And I have some other function t2n, which is equal to 6n square plus 8n. We know how to evaluate such functions based on our program. As I already discussed this thing in the previous lecture based on our model machine. Okay. Now what will be the rate of both the functions when n tends to infinity? Okay. Let's try to evaluate both the functions when n is equal to 100. And we get some values like this. Now let's evaluate when n is equal to 10,000 then the value will be something like this. When we evaluate when n is equal to 10 lakhs, then the value will be something like this. As we can see that effect of lower terms is getting lesser and lesser in a way that we can ignore lower terms as when n tends to infinity. As we can see that these terms has no effect when we have n is equal to 10 lakh. So we can say that when n tends to infinity, t1n is approximately equal to t1n, t2n. So, so we just got the idea that there are many functions which will behave in a similar way when n tends to infinity. So that's why. So why not keep all these functions into the same set? This is basically the intuition behind sets. Okay. Let's define our first category for our set, which is big O notation, and which we call as asymptotic notation as well. Okay, uh, we define asymptotic notation or big O notation as, let's say we have a function fn, which we evaluate uh, based on our model machine, and and we figured out two constants, c and n nodes, such that this condition holds where fn is always less than equal to cgn for all great and greater than equal to n. Then we can map those sort of functions into set gn. Fine. Let's say we have a function fn which is equal to 5n square plus 2n plus 1. Let's say I define gn as n square and I figured out when n0 is equal to 1 and c is equal to 8. In that case, this property is holds where fn is always less than equal to 8n square when n is greater than n naught where we have n naught is equal to 1 and c is equal to 8. Let's try to visualize this graph. In this graph we can see that after n naught cgn it's always greater than fn. So so that's why we can say that big O is basically upper bound of rate of growth of time. Fine, let's define the second category of our sets, which we call as omega notation. In this case, we def let's say we have a fn and there exists c and n node such that cgn is less than equal to fn for n greater than equal to n node. Fine, let's say I have the same function fn which is equal to f5n square plus 2n plus 1 and I have gn which is equal to n square. Let's say we have let's say I figure out C as 5 and N0 as 0, then I can surely say that Fn is always greater than or equal to 5N square when N0 is equal to 0 and C is equal to 5. So as we can see in the graph that o Fn always exceeds Cgn after N0. Fine. So that's why we can say that omega notation, it's always represent the lower bound of rate of growth of time. Fine. So now let's discuss the third category of our sets, which is theta notation. So for a theta notation, we defined our function fn. Let's say we calculate that function and there exist constants c1, c2 and n node such that c1gn is less than or equal to fn and it's less than or equal to c2gn for all n greater than or equal to n node. Let's say we have a function which is equal to 5n square plus 2n plus 1 and we have c1 is equal to 5, c2 is equal to 8 and n0 is equal to 1. When we 
plot the graph we will get something like this and we can also see that fn is less than 8n square and it is greater than 5n square so we have our c1 is equal to 5 c2 is equal to 8 and n naught is equal to 1 so after n naught we can see that our c2 gn it's always greater than fn and c1 gn it's always less than fn so we can say that theta n square basically the tide map of our algorithm so it's always a good a good idea to evaluate the runtime of an algorithm in theta notation so that's all about this guys thank you